The Great War is coming. We've got the Battle of the Bears, the Subtle Knife, and Lee's ready to fight again. Stay tuned as we discuss His Dark Materials Season 1, Episode 7. I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz. Hey, everybody. I hope you appreciated that last emphasis on seven because she said seven. Seven. <laughs> We're getting towards the end of season one. My name is Rachel Goodman. I am here with Philly fanatic Vito. Hello, everybody. And sci fi fan Holly. What up, y'all? And we're here to discuss episode seven of His Dark Materials. Stay tuned until the end because we're going to get to our special segments, including our news, our page to screen, and our predictions. Well, not predictions for me because <laughs> you don't want to know what I know. Mm. <laughs> so I'm going to hold back from that because I've read the book. Hold back. Vito. Such <laughs> optimism for the fight to the death. Yeah. Yeah. I... Uh, am really geared up for episode eight because of this. I want to know everything of how this is going to end because I felt <laughs> like this episode was all just loose ties, yeah. just like showing us them so that they can then tie it up. And Hallie. <laughs> <coughs> Hallie, how did you feel in this episode? I felt like a mess. I was yeah. like, I was like, first off, Lyra, okay. She was phenomenal. Silver tongue. Yo. And you know what I loved about that too? Um, in my family, they called me the silver tongue as well. So I was Ooh. like, I was like <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Vito, Vito, go ahead and dust my shoulder off for me. Uh, there just we go. Got it. For those of you listening, I just got it. What I love <laughs> about Lyra is this her ability to manipulate, but for the greater good. Absolutely. Yes. yes, because so far we've seen how Coulter, she does share, Lyra and Coulter share so many similarities as we talked about last week, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Lyra's ability to do this and to do what, be, what would be considered evil or you know, a negative trait to have, but to use it for survival. In a, in a positive way for the people that she actually loves. Manipulation she, is everything, and it's just your ability to use it to the advantage of the people. And her silver tongue, perfect, you know, yeah. perfect name for her. Yorick! Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't die in this one, buddy. You yeah. didn't think he was going to die, did you? I did. That was my prediction last time. What? I thought he was going to actually, just because um, I feel like HBO would set us up for that kind nah, of death. But nah, I don't know. Nah, nah, so, I'm so, so glad Philip I ignored Pullman you. Wouldn't... I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you thought that. It's okay. I would offend you. I'd be like, calm down. So calm. let's just kind of briefly go through this then. Because mm -hmm. we had oh, a cool. lot with Yo4 and Yorick. Yeah. One, we had Lyra's manipulation of Yorick. But one of the things that I want to point out, or sorry, of Yo4, mm -hmm. not um, Yo4. <laughs> so hard when they both Yo4. have I names. Yeah. Um, but the this little, like, you know, the situation that we got with Jonathan, I just want to, or Jonathan. I just want to bring him up really fast and get your take on that exchange that they had. I loved him. Specifically I, what he said about Azrael. Yeah. I thought he was hilarious. He's like that that whole angel devil dynamic that's on your shoulder. He's he's like the possibility of what could be. Um, this is what will happen to you if you stay in here long enough. You're going to go crazy too. And Lyra was like, mm -mm, we're not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised by how much he knew about the conflict of everything that was going on. Like he but I mean he'd been in there probably long enough. I want to know what he has seen. I want to know more about Azriel. And he like gave he was like, "Yeah, you're just like him, but like that's not enough. I need to know more." Yeah. Azriel was nuts to me. I was I was thinking what happened to him, but we okay, we won't go there. We'll we'll talk about that. Okay. So, let's get to the actual fight. So, okay. we know that Lyra was very cunning. That's literally the word I wrote down for her. Just with how she handled um Yo4 and literally convinced him that she was a demon. Right. Mm, I thought that was brilliant. I thought it was a very exciting idea, the idea that an animal's demon would be a human. That's and she, she knew how to talk to him. She knew how to call him a god. Yeah. She knew how to basically kiss his feet. And at the same time, you know, it's like this guy, like, obviously, like, you know, 
uh, megalomaniac where mm -hmm. she just kind of, she instinctually, instinctually knows what is going to get him to believe her. And at the same time, he, not only that, but then she convinced him to tell his subjects that it was all his idea to have this battle. I mean, it runs in the uh, blood of the family, apparently, because it seems like every person in Lyra's family has so far been able to deceive him. So he just is either gullible that or that true. family specifically can just <laughs> manipulate him very well. Yeah. <laughs> he just connected some dots to me, Vito. Her whole family is yeah. <laughs> They're all and conniving. pulling strings. Right. Yeah. And and it's funny because they're all doing it to each other yeah. as well. <laughs> oh, jeez. Like, like uh, uh, Azriel pretending that himself. that Lyra was his niece. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then Coulter pretending like Lyra was just a subject. Yeah, and then Lyra and, doing everything around Coulter. Right. I'm sure we're going to see Lyra I interact think, with Azriel in that way, too. Yeah, I think they just need to have a kumbaya. Uh, you know, just like let it out. Some counseling. Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> well. Oh, no. <laughs> Next. Next episode they're all gonna do. meet they're gonna triangle up and they're gonna fight <laughs> there's gonna be a fight somewhere there i just uh you know i uh, well, she's doing it again i know she's doing it Can again just get along? <laughs> i just want to make an announcement too for everybody who has been watching us live we're not going to be live for Ooh, episode eight we're um, not open next yes. week so we're actually pre-taping it so you will see it uh but it will be pre-taped i'll try and hang out in the chat for when you guys are watching it so that i can talk to you guys about it because i'm so excited for this finale and Vito, you can let me know how it goes because yeah. i'm going on vacation <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> okay <laughs> All right, let's jump um, to the end. We do know that, obviously, Yofor, um, what really, you know, what his downfall was, was getting distracted and going after Lyra. I, just Lyra's ability to use the alethiometer to see exactly what he wanted to hear. I want one. She's so smart. Yeah. She's so, and the, her ability to just play into that role of like, all right, this dude wants to be a god. I'm going to treat him like a god. And then she bow, you know, she goes over to Yorick, mm. and that's what that's when everything is revealed that yeah. she has been lying to him and tricking um, you for. Mm -hmm. And I just find it, it it's it's fascinating to me that it if Lyra had not been there, which she requested for, to you know to be out of the picture, then. Um, Yofor pro probably would have won. Yeah, you're but right. But it was Lyra's, you know, stepping in and trying to help Yorick that changed everything because when Yofor went after Lyra, you know, everything was off the table. I do want to make one note here that is just something that was a little unbelievable for me. Let's hear it. Be How here. far did Lyra fall and then she just kind of right. ignored her e Everyone's wounds? talking about that and I was thinking about it too. Like, All she did was a little stomachache. Like, oh, yeah, now. she was like, oh my God. All right, I'm good. <laughs> like, so, I mean, what are you, you just what, fell. What kind of potion is she on? I, I <laughs> want some. I'm going to I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here Okay. Please. and say that when I saw this, I was with you guys in the sense I was like, how? Yeah. But I am going to suspend my this disbelief. disbelief which is fine. I'm allowing. We are in a magical world yeah, with and magical things. They and, have and the blood moss and yeah. she's like. But she's not a witch. She's <laughs> not magical. Can you give or us a spoiler she? right now no. <laughs> from the book no. and tell us how she actually veto? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna take I'm my gonna veto you. Off. It I'm was. Gonna... Sim it was. Yeah, like that. They actually kept that. Okay. So there was a fall. Okay. Okay, but, but she survived. How did she it. live from it, that fall from the book? It was. I think it was the same thing. I think. All right. Was, they just didn't acknowledge. I think, <laughs> I, what? I, I'm trying to remember, and it's I might okay. have to actually look. Kay. But from what I remember, she literally fell and just happened to survive. And I think she landed a certain way, and that's how she did not actually. Um, yeah. I I want to put out that I think Lyra is the luckiest person <laughs> in the entirety of this. It, I like be she's Lyra important, when I grow up. but she's lucky. <laughs> yeah. She. I mean, I'm just willing to. To say, all right, maybe yeah. in this world people have some kind of yeah. crazy, like strong, you know, bone structure, and nothing's gonna break. Yeah. From, I think that's BS. <laughs> it's forgivable. I'm not like, look. I just wanted to bring it up to yeah. to be like, hey, that. Mm, but like, I'm not gonna. It's not like I'm gonna be like, oh, this series sucks. She didn't <laughs> get hurt. A child didn't get hurt. That's Gosh. not what I'm thinking. Oh, but I'm not saying. Can you. we just have like <laughs> some realism and continuity here? 
Yeah. Like, come on. I, at first, I thought it was it was the network that did it. Now I'm hearing it's Pullman that did it. <laughs> I'm confuzzled. Yeah. Well, we can. Uh, yeah. You know what? Episode eight. I'm gonna pull up that excerpt and we okay. can read it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So All right. definitely. <gasps> You're gonna read me a bedtime story. I will. I oh will read God. you a bedtime story, oh and we can put it in our page to screen <laughs> next episode. <laughs> All right. I don't know if that's what we'll be focusing on in the finale. No, Gosh, I hope not. We might need a little bit of a break I though. Mean, it's right. intense. Um, oh no. All right. Um, ready, y'all. We all get to get a bedtime story via Rachel. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about. <sighs> Let's talk about Lord Asriel and finally, <laughs> like, you know, first of all, Lyra obviously meets up with Roger again. They Thank find God. each other. They're so They're cute. So My cute. heart just warmed up a little bit. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Patter. Me too. And thank God, because I think they really needed each other at this point. Yeah. I want them to be in love. I mean, I know they're little, <laughs> but I mean, if Lyra can fall and land on her feet, all I think she can be in love too. So... <laughs> when I was reading the book the first time, I definitely shipped them. Okay. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Oh. I, I mean, I guess further in the series, uh, we might see, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, man. I, I just want to talk about this. What do you guys, as non-book readers make of the fact I that... I read books. Oh, sorry. I know, I'm just kidding. Non- I'm just kidding. Non- <laughs> I don't. You didn't see me fighting that. Like, I didn't, I didn't what? I don't read that books. That came out wrong. Non-readers <laughs> of this book. Yeah. What do I we just think? Don't see what what did you make of the fact that Azriel went from fear that Lyra was there in the north to suddenly, oh, I, everything is cool now? I, I am very afraid. What do you I guys think? Out. Like, I know this is predictions, but I'm just, I'm just curious. Go ahead, Hallie. I got this. All right. So All right. I think that the bears were having him do similar stuff that Coulter was. And since that, I guess they were going to have a child to be delivered to him so he can continue his, his experiments and whatnot and perfect what Coulter fell behind with for some sort of exchange, maybe to keep Lyra safe. I don't know. The fact that you're nodding, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm getting warm. So you guys are picking up on the fact that potentially, you know, there's something going on yeah. with Azrael. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, yeah. Since, and since he now has another child instead, Roger, it says, oh, okay, I don't have to use Lyra now. Yeah. The way he acted, it was, um, it was I mean, it felt like a little pedophilia. Please run the bar. <laughs> run the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, not what I picked up on. I mean, Excuse me. It was creepy. It was Come creepy. I didn't take that. No, I, mean, I got more of like scientists. It's either that or gonna kill the child out of the way. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, you don't think that's creepy? I think that's creepy. All I right, think, then. Uh, We're sorry. on the same page. Regardless, yeah, no, I don't pretty much thought the same me. thing. I'm not, I'm not judging you. So <laughs> it's interesting to me because, you know, we finally get to see this moment where. Asriel's actually very paternal with her. As her uncle, um, he, yeah, uncle, he did not show, like, there were moments where, yes, he was sitting with her while she fell asleep, but yeah. this level of care for her, I, I feel like this is the moment where we first actually see it and where I felt like yeah. a father was showing his concern, like, why are you here? But part of me wants to believe that it's something that is also partially out of his control because the way that he said, like, I didn't send for you. I did not send for you makes it seem like whatever is coming is something that he cannot stop. And maybe I like just by my knowledge of what's going on with the Aurora and like that that's a big deal. <laughs> like I think there's something that's going to happen in that particular spot with the Aurora that they're going to need a child for that is full of dust. And I think Roger oh, is going to be that child, or so he thinks, no. because I think it also has to do with a child having their demon. I'm gonna cry. And I don't know what's gonna happen there. I just don't know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna cry. There. I will say nothing. Thank you for saying nothing. <laughs> Well, I mean, okay, here's But my, I'm afraid. Yeah. Here's my reassurance. There's more than one book, so therefore everything has to be okay, right? With Lyra. We know that Lyra is okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. I don't have good faith in Roger at this point, I'm not gonna I, lie. I am hopeful for him. Um, let's just say that there was another male protagonist that will be entering the story very soon and his name yes. is Will. Yes. And um Mm-hmm. HBO is not short of their deaths in their show, so I'm not looking forward to that one. What? Let's talk about Will then. That's a great way to 
time to segue. Before we segue, just really fast, Thank you to everybody who's been joining the chats and been commenting. We have received a ton of comments. Thank you. We're going to do a best of Aww. in the final episode for season one. So we will read your comments. And um, thank you guys for helping us be the ESPN of TV talk. Yeah. Every time you like, follow, subscribe, give us five stars on five iTunes. Five stars. Yes. One through four doesn't work. Yes. What Vito said. Uh, it definitely helps us grow. You guys are the best part of After Buzz next to my amazing co-host. She's too uh, sweet. <laughs> so, let's, give her, let's give her a look. For those listening in the chat, <laughs> we just we're giving gave Rachel, Rachel a little sweetie little look. look. Like yeah. a sweet look. For she all those sweetie look. the iTunes listeners. Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I feel the love. Of course. We love Rachel. <laughs> Vito, what is with that Great phone moment. operator voice? Hello, guys. Hello. Yeah, it's Jack. <laughs> so... Okay, we have a lot that happened with Will. Yeah, I'm he's got his first kill. It. Yeah, first kill. Will, Congrats. he's got blood on his hands Why now. Why is this a joyful thing? I'm being ironic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I was thinking, um, Vito. <laughs> no. So, Will, I just want to say we're going to talk about this more in our page to screen because cool. a lot of this is actually from the subtle knife. Um, everything that we're now seeing with Will is that second book. This is the second book. Okay, yeah, cool. second book. Okay. So the, now they've gone from backstory with Will that that you know was told in flashback to actual events that are happening. Wow, they didn't get to any of that for Will until the second book. Yeah, I did not know Oof. Will existed until book two. Y'all that is ruining. Pacing. Y'all, are, y'all yeah. are ruining my news right now. <laughs> All right, because I was actually going to talk about this. Oh, okay. Insane. Well, in a few minutes we'll get to our news. So that's perfect mm, timing. Mm, mm, All mm. right, let's just talk about the only other thing I want to. <laughs> mention and then we'll jump to our segments is everything that we saw with Coulter yeah. um, and this is again a question that goes out to the people who have not read the book what do you make of what Coulter was saying to Father McPhail <laughs> and the Magisterium I answer a question <laughs> with a question who has the power Coulter or the Magisterium Yes. nobody well, knows you know what I find so interesting to be about the dynamic between men and women what's that Women are always pulling the strings. <laughs> I mean, that has been told throughout history. So, I, I mean, it's being played out in this dynamic yeah. between Coulter and the Magisterium. You notice how he started to get a little sweet for her and, like, touched her skin and was thinking it over, like, hmm, hmm, should I do it? And side note, too, I thought it was really cool to see Keen, the actor there. And I was like, wait, that's... That's, that's Daphne's dad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I was back. thinking about exactly, that, too. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But anyways, all right. I'm going to go back to that moment. Shroom. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we're there. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, gosh, beware of the womanly, womanly wiles. Can't I mean, chance. but we just have so many powerful woman characters in this, and I love that so much. Like, even though Coulter is kind of a shitty person, she's like such a strong and well written character, in my opinion. Same with like the witch. We saw the witch with uh, with Lynn's character. I can't remember his name. Uh, the magic's Lee. working Lee. on you. Yeah. yeah, and then and then Lyra. I mean, like Lyra is like the ultimate ultimately well-written character in this situation, I think. You just proved my point. Yeah, no, and I agree. I totally agree. And it's really interesting to see the dynamic between Coulter and the Magisterium at this point because obviously she has more power than they're willing to talk about. She absolutely does, and I think what I really, like, stuck out the most to me is, one, the moment where they said that Asriel needed to die, that obviously this is their new you know, goal. I'm but kind of with them now. At first I thought the Magisterium was like, go away, stop it. But now I'm thinking, hmm, Azriel does need to die. Well, I don't know if he needs to die. My, without <laughs> spoiling anything, all I'm going to say is I found it fascinating that Coulter, I feel like in the show, this is the first time where we actually see that Coulter recognizes they're scared of Asriel. Like, not just... Yeah. Like, before, we we knew from episode one that they saw him as a threat. They were going after him, trying to stop his experiments. But Coulter really called out their feelings. Coulter and, can smell his next move. And, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Coulter's yeah. fantastic. I, yeah. She's my favorite character, to be honest. She's very fascinating, mm-hmm. yeah. Very dynamic. Yeah, and even just from seeing this ending ending scene with Asriel, yeah. I am almost starting to, from a show perspective, I'm starting to like mm. Coulter more. I Ooh. I can understand why she's got, she's so complex. Yeah. It's like I 
I almost don't know what her end goal is at this point. And I kind of like that because it's leaving it a mystery to me. I think she wants power, but she also just wants, I, I don't know, but she's consistent. Yeah. She is so consistent. And she just like knows what the Magisterium wants and therefore she can just manipulate them however she wants. And Same. she knows Asriel. She's the only one that knows him as well as I guess she does. Yeah. Intimately. I kind of like low key look up to her. I won't lie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there's definitely. Stop it, Vito. Nope. Don't give looks. I see where you're coming from. <laughs> Thank because you. Outside of her going about this and the going after things that maybe you and I would not go after. And murdering children. Okay. That's outside. That's not of, what I meant. But her drive. Yeah. And the fact that she is right about certain things, like the fact that females have had to historically. Mm -hmm act in different, like not, I don't want to say act, but we have had to go about being in powerful positions in a much more complex way than yeah. males yeah. historically. Absolutely. And I understand and I respect that. And I'm going to even go so far as to say that Coulter is the way she is in part because of the system. And I think 100%. that's one of, yeah, and I think that's one of the points yeah. of the whole, yeah. I'm about to give you an air five. Are you ready? <laughs> one, I am ready. Two, three. Yeah. That was savage. <laughs> All right, so. Always got to insert yourself, Vito. <laughs> <laughs> you can come back. Stay out know. of the woman talk, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump to our segments with the last, you know, our final moments jump, here. Jump. Let's go to our news segment. Yes. <laughs> After Buzz TV News. So, as you guys know, adapting a popular book series to the screen is not an easy task, and you cannot please everyone. And fans have been talking about Will's character and how they are so baffled as to why he was introduced to the storyline so quickly compared to the book. And according to the books, Will's character doesn't even enter the story until the second book, The Subtle Knife, as Rachel mentioned earlier. So seeing him appear in episode 5 surprised a lot of folks. So, why was Will brought in so early after doing my own research the answer was definitely not what i expected and according to an article by radiotimes.com um, the executive producer and an unusual practical considerably hugely influenced decision and here is the reason why and I quote, child actors' hours are very limited. If we were only filming with Lyra's oh. character, we'd be shooting the first season by now. And she explained at the BBC's Writers' Room Festival, we had to put Will in and more adults and pick up the pace. So considering the tight regulations on child actors, it makes perfect sense as to why the series wouldn't want to depend on one teen star. And yeah. according to the labor laws for children under 18, they're only permitted to work nine hours a day on set. Yeah. Ooh, that's so, good, though. I, yeah, actually, so, I actually knew this because I've had to work on sets that I've been directing children, and yeah, it's, right. it's tough. It, and that was the only reason why. I read that, and I just started busting out laughing. I was like, <laughs> wait, what? I thought it was going to be some sort of complex decision in regards to the book, but no. Wow. It I was, mean... Yeah, it was really that simple. It totally works, though. Yeah. 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 I, I feel like they did it in a tasteful way, and Pullman was on board with it, too, so it all yeah. worked out. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move on to our next article now. And you know what? The lack of continuity, it doesn't start there. According to this article by Metro.co.uk, fans have taken the Twitter, popping off about the changes that were made to the final battle between Yofer and York. And according to the book, Lorik rips off Yofer's lower jaw and eats his heart, which was left out, and fans were unsure why. And one fan tweeted, wait, wasn't Yorick supposed to rip off Lofer's jaw? Am I mistaken? The fight was scene was okay, but I feel like it's lacking. I was all for the bear fight, but why did they do it without the armor? And where was there no lurk tricking him to thinking he was hurt or ripping off the jaw? They left out the best part. Another complaint. So I have a thought on that. Okay, it's go HBO, for it. and we are, you know, obviously HBO can do whatever they want with, you know, mm -hmm. violence. Fair. 
this particular show, I have noticed there's only a level of yeah. where they're going to go. So I feel kids. like that's why they didn't. Because it's right, like in the book, it was a little more yeah, graphic. In terms yeah, of the, I, yeah, I mean, but the whole show has been kind of graphic. And you know what? Once again, I mean, hmm. there's some things that can be left out and some things you do want to keep. And because I did not read the book, I honestly, I was impartial. As long as they kept it in that Lyra was pulling all the strings, that made me really happy. So how about you guys let us know in the comments what you think do you think they should have kept the scene or not or are people complaining and it's just long overdue awesome well thank you Allie thank Absolutely. you very much Allie. let's get to our page screen <laughs> <laughs> all right all right let's flip through the page yeah, we got it. <laughs> right, here we go <laughs> Oh, there it is. There it is. There All it right. Is. Got it. Oh, yeah. I've got a book. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I am not going to say too much in this particular episode because next episode, I have a lot of things I want to say that... If I say too much now, I'm going to be spoiling something. Right, um, well, I'm st raggy. I've got two things to say. One of them, I am honestly even debating saying, but I'll go with the first one first. Um, Lee, that whole scene where mm, he ends with up witch. with Serafina, yeah. that was part of, that That did not happen the way that they portrayed it. Yeah. Um, it happened in the hot air balloon. So oh. it was kind of, mm. I mean, similar, but just out of order a little. Um, so that's one difference. The other thing, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, is that everything with Will, um, that is all part of The Subtle Knife, yeah. which is book two. Uh, uh, I want to say something. It is a tad bit of a spoiler, mm. so I don't think I should. It has to do... Uh, yeah, no, I shouldn't. Okay. Yeah, just no, thank you. I shouldn't. Thank you for saying that. I shouldn't. That. Yeah, it has to do with The Subtle Knife, so we okay. will... It, yeah, if they happen to kind of hint at it a little more in the next episode, I will talk about it. Gotcha. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, <laughs> I won't say I'm it. very interested about that hot balloon thing because that, that means that either in the book there was something that happened in which Lee did not go down or didn't go down until after the witch encounter. So I'm very curious as to what that difference is, but I'm sure we will be able to talk about that Yeah, later. yeah, we can definitely. I Next episode when we have, I'm guessing we're going to have seen the whole first book by, you know, mm. the end of episode eight. I that's hope. my guess, the way that the way that it feels with pacing. Yeah. Uh, and if that's the case, I will give you all the spoilers <laughs> next episode. Oh, boy. <laughs> for this book, anyway. All right. Ah, yes. um, let's go to our predictions, which Your I will... After Buzz TV do. Predictions. <laughs> Hallie? Oh, it's my turn. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you caught me in, in, in mid-Twilight Zone there, so <laughs> I know it's a good thing. <sighs> predictions. Um... I'm so sad about this. I just I want to cover my eyes when I say it, but I think that Azriel is going to like murder Roger and start experimenting on him, and I'm so sad. And I just want to I want to beat him up for it, and I'm I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm so sad about it. So I think that's gonna happen, and I think that York and the Bears are going to try and intervene and save Roger. I'm I'm hoping Roger doesn't die because it would literally crush Lyra, but it could also change Lyra so much that she comes into herself, like that moment of the dark night of the soul trigger. And just a hypothetical too, but we see how Lyra feels about her father right now and how she respects him. Right. So it's just interesting, should something like that happen... Mm. how she's going to react. I, she's more loyal to Roger, though. She has a relationship wow. with him. This whole book wouldn't even happen that's if, what, if it weren't for Roger. That's what I mean. Mm. Yeah. I think two things. I think Yurik's going to die in this one. Why Defen do you always <laughs> think Yurik is going okay, to die? Okay, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I think it's because he's a defender of Lyra, and because of that specifically, that's just something that I think that they could end the series or end the end the season on that would leave it to be like whoa but that's less of one the one that I think I actually don't think that um I George no what's uh, Roger? Roger gosh George. I am so sorry my brain just took, see this is why you're not gonna there. die because you uh, hold on you hold on hold on hold on hold on George. I think Roger's gonna disappear I think Roger's going to go into the multiverse and I think that's like something that has to do with uh what Asriel is doing um and yeah, I think that's going to continue on the series for then uh, Will and Lyra to have to find Roger. 
Well, on that note, I will say nothing. Vito, where can everybody find you? If you want to find me and talk to me about Roger, you can uh, at me at uh, vscutty, uh, at V-S-C-U-T-T-I, on Twitter and Instagram. And Holly, where can everybody find you? And if you want to find me and talk about how Vito's wrong about York, you can find me <laughs> at Pure Holly, P-U-R-E-H-A-L-L-E, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all the things. And I'm Rachel Goodman. You can find me on Twitter at Rach Goodman. We will be back for another episode Episode, the final episode of His Dark Materials, which you'll be able to watch on the day that episode 8 comes out. Until next time, we will catch you all later. Gonna miss you guys. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.